to another Teacher's Corner. I'm Teacher Kirby, coming at you from the Triple Test server today. Uh, this is one week prior to the release of Season 11.5 and the new Skill Tree, which a lot of players are apprehensive about. Uh, not sure how this is going to go, not sure how this compares to current holodeck settings, so I'm going to go over that with you today. Okay, so this is the new skill tree. You'll notice it looks a lot like a like our current specialization trees that we have on Holodeck and it's very similar. It works in a very similar way. One thing to note, one point on this skill tree is equivalent to three points on the previous skill tree in most situations. We'll discuss some of the other some of the situations where that's slightly different as we go. All right, so this is a Romulan. This is my Romulan tactical build that is currently getting about 94k DPS on holodeck in my record run. So I'm going to pretty much replicate that build here. Now so you'll notice first thing we have this divided into three sections engineering science and tactical as we spend points in each you'll notice down here on the bottom that these tracks will fill and unlock different options for us to choose okay and we're not going to actually get to, I can tell you now, we're not going to actually unlock any of the ultimates. In my opinion and the opinion of most people that I've talked to, of every person that I've talked to, they're simply not worth it with what you have to sacrifice to get 24 points in one specific track is just not worth it for what they do. I mean, Focused and focus frenzy is really no better than a console at this point. Um, probability manipulation, if you're using particle manipulator at all, it completely messes with that, and uh, it actually can, in some cases, limit or hinder your critical hit or critical chance uh, stats, and EPS corruption, while some people think that it will affect all plasma damage, it does not. This only affects your EPS, it affects the EPS systems of your foe and affects damage that does, that it does to that. Okay, so really it's minor at best, it's just not worth it for what you have to sacrifice in other damage in other areas to get there. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's take a look. Now this has three sections and five levels. Okay. Ranging from lieutenant all the way up to general. To get to general, I have to unlock, I have to spend 35 points total in the previous things. So Let's get to the nitty and gritty. We have hull restoration. Hull restoration is half of the current um, star starship te starship hull repair. Okay, why do I say half? Because currently starship hull repair affects not only the outgoing healing that you do, but also the passive regeneration rate of your hull. Now, two points into this will give your healing abilities the same oomph or kick that they currently have on holodeck. Okay, so we're going to put two points in that. Hull capacity. Alright, now this is how many hit points your hull has. This is currently the same as your structural integrity field. Okay. Now I'm only going to put one point in this. I have six points in structural integrity on holodeck, but I'm only going to put one point into this and I'll show you why. Down here on our unlock path, 
our second unlock. There it is. We have to choose between max maximum hull capacity or subsystem repair. Well, on most DPS builds, subsystem repair is an issue, especially with the hot restarts. If you don't have the hot restarts from the high from the Iconian set, a simple engineering team gives you the same effect. You can restart your subsystems at any given point. Okay, because that's one of the things engineering team does. So, subsystem repair, not really needed. And so that leaves you with the choice of maximum hull capacity. When you compare between holodeck and Tribble, one point in hull capacity plus choosing maximum hull capacity here is the equivalent of two points in hull capacity or two points in six points bleh, bleh, can't speak today is the equivalent of six points in the current structural integrity system so I'm only putting one point in hull capacity to allow that shield restoration this is the same as shield emitters okay in the current system I want two points here because I have six points in shield emitters on my holodeck build. And then we have shield capacity. This is the same as starship shield systems. And I want one point here because just like with our engineering friend, we have maximum shield capacity and just like with engineering, one point in shield capacity plus choosing maximum shield capacity here over starship stealth will give me the same as six points in shield systems on holodeck okay and when we move to the tactical we have energy weapon training or projectile weapon training well i'm not using any projectiles on this ship so it wouldn't make sense to put in projectile weapon training i am however using energy weapon training Okay, and there, so three points. All right, now let's come down back to engineering, EPS flow system, okay, electroplasma system flow. Now, remember I said earlier that for the most part, one point here is the equivalent of three points on holodeck. This is where that kind of changes because what they did with this, you notice this has it's shaped a little, the branch on here is shaped a little different than the others. It has one and then it has two branches that are of equal thing whereas most skills just have one branch going straight down. Alright, so with the electroplasma flow system or system flow one point here is the equivalent of about six points on the current holodeck system. Okay, gives you 60%. Now, we want to get that up to 100%. 100% is the current holodeck system if you put nine points into it. So you'll notice on the left side, I have improved DPS flow. And if you look at the numbers, total power transfer rate bonus equals plus 100%. That's what I want to get to. That matches my current EP electroplasma, flows, electroplasma system stats on holodeck. But you'll notice, oh my goodness, there's another thing here. Now this says full impulse energy shunt. All right. This is part of what the old driver coil system used to do. If you put points into driver coil, the more points you put into driver coil, the less power was drained from the remaining three subsystems when you went into full impulse, allowing you to keep more power in your system and thereby have less of a time delay for getting it back up to your systems back up to their normal power level you come out so what this does is that's what this does that is this function it does exactly the same thing as that part of driver coil okay 
Alright, so what I want to do, I do want to put one point into this so that I can have my power levels stay the same. Alright, now I have impulse expertise. And this is turn rate. This is the same as inertial dampeners. Not, not inertial dampeners, I'm sorry. Impulse thrusters on the current system. Okay, I'm going to put one point into that. And then I'm going to come over here to control expertise. Control expertise is the same as graviton generators in the current system. Okay, so I currently have six points in graviton generators, so I'm going to put one point in control expertise. Why? Because this is another one just like the electroplasma system flow. Okay, this is six points. This would be nine points. And then this is a little something extra that we did not actually have on holodeck, and that is control amplification. When control is used on a foam, minus 35, all damage resistance rating for 35 seconds. So this gives an added debuff to your enemies. Okay. Now I'm not going to put this point in. We may come back to it later. Alright. Then we have drain expertise. Drain expertise, pretty simple. Okay, this is your flow caps, flow capacitors from the old system. Now again, very similar to EPS system flow and drain and control expertise, whereas this one point here is the equivalent of six points in the holodeck system. Adding this second point here for improved drain expertise makes it the equivalent of having nine points in two flow capacitors on the current holodeck system. All right, and then we have a little something extra that was not present on holodeck, and that's drain infection. Drain infection is not triggered by using plasmonic leech. Just a note there, something to remember when you're deciding whether or not to get this. Okay, and what drain infection does is when drain is used on foe, electrical damage each second for five seconds. Okay, so this is triggered by things that drain except for plasmonic leech. All right, so because leech does not trigger this, we're going to leave that blank. And we are now still equivalent to what we have on holodeck. So now we have targeting expertise. This is the same as Starship targeting systems. And there we go. And this is maneuvering. Okay, Starship maneuvers gives you an increase to your defense. All right, now again, on these single track trees, one point is equivalent to three on holodeck system. Both of these had six points on my holodeck tree, so I'm simply replicating at this point. All right, coming down to hull plating. Hull plating, they combined two things. They combined the hull plating and the armor plating or armor reinforcements from the previous skill tree. Armor reinforcements affected your passive kinetic damage resistance. Hull plating affected your passive energy damage resistance. All right. So as it stands right now, putting one point in hull plating, this initial point here, is the same as putting three points each in hull plating and armor reinforcements. Okay. After this, notice how this is a two track tree here. So after this, it splits. Now you can put more into either energy resistance for energized hull plating or kinetic resistance with ablative hull plating. 
since I only had three points in each on holodeck, I'm just going to stop there. Okay? Then damage control. When we first started and we were looking at hull restoration, remember I mentioned that hull restoration was half of the current Starship hull repair. The other half is damage control. Now you notice this literally gives you Oh, this literally gives you plus 15 damage control, which is increases your regeneration rate by 1% of its base value. Okay, which is not much. Okay, this is literally not much. You are not going to notice this. All right, so you can actually skip over this if you choose. Same thing with shield regeneration. You already have a base rate. You're not going to notice the difference by spending only one point, which is what you would do anyway. Okay, we can come back to that later. Shield hardness, this is new to this skill tree. It allows you to increase the amount of incoming damage that is negated by your shields. So this is kind of like a resistance buff for your shields. Okay, this is new, so we're going to skip over this. And then we come to weapon amplification and weapon specialization. Okay, so weapon specialization gives you plus critical chance. If you spend three points in it, you get plus 6%. Okay. With weapon amplification, if you spend three points in that, this gives you crit severity, you get plus 20% crit severity. Okay. Right now, because these are actually both new to the tree, especially the improved weapon specialization, I'm only going to do enough. I'm going to do crit severity first because this is a Romulan after all and he has plenty of crit chance. Okay. I'm only going to put enough to unlock the next tree. There it is. Alright, so right now I have two points in each of these which gives me a significant boost to my crit chance and a pretty good boost to my crit severity. Now I've unlocked the powers. Alright, so now we're into, this is your old warp core skills. These are the things that affect your power. This actually combines the uh, different subsystem powers, the weapon, especially the weapon or, yeah, weapon subsystem, the auxiliary system, the shield system, the engine system, and the warp core potential skills. Okay, and that's both the offensive and defensive tuning. So, in order to get a basic bonus, because you do want that, you want to unlock both. Okay, the other reason is because you want to boost. Now, you'll notice. My power levels are changing as I do this. Okay. I've now spent. Okay. And I'm going to buy the aux auxiliary. Excuse me. Okay. So we have shield, aux, weapons, and engines. I'm buying weapons and aux. Okay. There are going to be opportunities for me to deal with subsystem power in other places, okay, as we keep going. There it is. So as we keep going, you notice I can choose between engine subsystem power and shield subsystem power here. So. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and get the bigger bonus for my shields because that's my defense. 
and I'm going to choose engine subsystem performance down here so I'm going to leave that point blank. Okay. Now we have exotic particle generator. I currently have, this is the same thing as your particle gens, particle generator now. I have six points in that so I'm going to put two points here. And this is new, long range targeting system sensors. This is new. This is actually going to be a very good thing. You're going to want this. Another new thing is the hull penetration. Okay, improved hull penetration, advanced hull penetration, and the shield penetrations. Okay, you're going to want, definitely are going to want long range targeting sensors. Now, one of the things they're doing with this new system is they're changing the drop-off, the energy drop-off, or how much damage potential you lose at distance, at 9.9 .9 kilometers out, with your energy weapons. Okay, For cannons, this is going to be a buff. For beams, this is going to be a nerf. Now, to get the equivalent of what you currently have on holodeck for beams, you will need to spend one point in long-range targeting sensors. Okay. Spending one point make, gives you the equivalent of the current drop-off rates for beams on holodeck. Okay. Now, if you want to improve that, which I highly recommend you do, you're going to want to spend more points in this. Personally, I recommend maxing this out. Okay. All right. Okay, next up on the docket, hull penetration and shield penetration. These are new, okay? Because they're new and we've already unlocked enough to go into general, I'm actually going to skip those for the time being and we'll come back to them later. Warp core potential, okay? This gives a flat bonus to all power systems, especially on a Romulan. Because I'm on a Romulan, I'm going to want that. So I'm going to take that and improved warp core potential again gives me power to everything so I'm going to take that as well and warp core efficiency hey come on click click there we go and warp core efficiency I want because I want to give that boost to my subsystems that innately don't have a lot of base power to begin with. Now you notice my power levels are within two of their holodeck equivalents. I look at that and that's what I see there. Alright, engineering readiness is new. This cools down my engineering abilities. I don't have, I don't need this, I don't want this. I have no use for it right now really. Um, everything's, my main engineering abilities are pretty much on 100% uptime anyway, with the exception of engineering team, which, okay, scientific readiness. Again, this is the same thing as engineering readiness, but for science skills, this gives me a cooldown on all of my science skills. Uh, it's rather low, okay, and I have all hands on deck anyway, so this I really don't need. This is another new thing, Shield Mastery. Every several seconds you will gain one charge of Shield Mastery. Next critical hit you suffer will be completely negated, meaning you will not feel it, resulting in zero damage being dealt to you. Okay, This will also consume Shield Mastery until the next refresh period, and it's once every 20 seconds. This is actually quite good, especially if you're tanking or need a little bit of extra survivability. This would possibly negate an Invisitorp. We haven't tested that yet, so don't hold me to that. <laughs> so, worth testing. We'll have to test it when it actually comes to Holodeck and see if that pans out. I'm actually not going to put any points in here yet. You'll notice I have eight points left, so I'm being very sparse with where I put them. And we have coordination protocols. This is for pets. It increases the survivability of your hangar pets and other allies. Okay, 20% hull capacity and shield capacity for hangar pets, 
25% hull capacity and shield capacity for all other teammates and summoned allies. So this is good if you're into buffing your teammates. Okay. And defensive coordination, again, gives some extra defense and damage resistance for hangar pets and for your teammates and summoned allies. So this would include fleet support. Okay. And offensive coordination gives a bit of a damage boost to them. Okay. I'm actually not going to deal with this. My pets are doing fine as they are. This is on top of what they already do on holodeck, so I'm going to leave that alone. Tactical readiness. I am going to put points, so I'm going to talk about tactical readiness for a little bit. The other two readiness, really not worth it, especially for this field that I have. I only have outside of emergency power to weapons, which is already on global, or on 100% uptime because I have two of them. I've only got engineering team, and really it's not worth it to put points into it for that. However, for tactical readiness, putting three points into tactical readiness will give you, when it comes to attack pattern beta, will give you the same effect as if you had one Zmok Genro. Okay, why is this important? Zmok Genro is worth over 100 million energy credits. So, by saving a few points and putting three points into tactical readiness, you can save that, okay, you can save that 100 million or so EC and just have those three points in there, okay. So I'm going to put three points into tactical readiness, which will then leave me, now I've replicated my build on holodeck, I've also gotten a few extras. The tactical readiness is extra, the extra crit hit, the long range targeting sensors, okay, are extras. I still have five points, okay. So what I can do, shield mastery, great for survivability, Hall penetration is also good. Okay. Some other things we can do. So I'm going to put one point into shield mastery because that'll give me a little extra survivability. I'm going to put one point into, there it is, into hull penetration. That'll give me a little extra oomph. I'm going to come up here, actually a bit surprisingly, we're going to re reassess this just a little bit. This build does have a gravity well on it. You see I have the gravity well right there. Okay. Now, notice this control amplification gives a damage resistance buff or debuff, sorry, to my enemies every time I use a control ability. Okay. The importance of this, it means that I'll be able to kill them faster. I want that, so I'm going to spend a point there. Okay. I'm going to leave Drain Infection alone because the only Drain ability I have is Leech and that doesn't trigger this. Alright. Now, if I want a little extra, let me see. Where can I put it? I could go with a little extra shield healing upon critical hits, or I could go with a little extra improved hull penetration, or I could even go with a little extra crit hit and crit damage. I think I'm going to go with because it will help me to kill faster. I'm going to go with hull penetration across the board there. All right, so here is my space build. Now you'll notice I still have a few things to select here to finish this out. So let's go through. First I have to choose between hangar health or battery expertise. Well, in my holodeck build, I maxed out battery expertise or batteries, 
Starship batteries. Because I do use batteries on this build, I want to double the duration of that. Battery expertise is the same as putting nine points in Starship in the current Starship batteries. So I'm going to choose battery expertise. Okay. Then I'm going to go down. I can choose sector space travel or transwarp cooldown. Personally, I do more transwarping at this point. It's a level 60 tune. So I want transwarp cooldown reductions. I don't usually find myself flying through sector space too often. All right, and then I have threat control, which is new, or hangar weaponry, which is new. So I can either choose to give myself an extra minus 100 threat generation while not in threatening stance, or a plus 100 threat generation while in threatening stance, which I'm not going to be using threatening stance, so it would give me a minus 100 threat gen. Or I can give an extra 10% damage from all sources for my hangar pets. Okay, I do use hangar pets. I'm pretty much usually the target, especially when I'm pugging. So I don't really see too much of a benefit from this. So I'm going to go with the hangar weaponry. Okay. In this case. All right. Now we've already talked about this. Maximum hull capacity or subsystem repair. In order to keep the levels that I have on holodeck, I'm going to choose hull capacity. And, ah, come on. There we go. And same thing here. I'm going to choose shield capacity again to keep the levels that I have on holodeck. All right. And then last one, I have to make a choice even though I don't use projectiles. I have to choose between projectile critical chance or projectile critical damage. In the event I do use projectiles, I'm going to want critical damage because that's going to have more of an effect with projectiles. You're going to see that scale more. All right. Next, over here, I can choose between engine subsystem power or shield subsystem power. You'll remember when I chose my skill points, I purposely left off the engines. So I'm going to choose engines here because that's a slightly lower thing. Now I can choose critical chance by 1% or crit damage, which is plus 5%. I'm going to choose critical damage because I already have a large critical hit. So I want those to have more oomph. Okay. And you get a slightly better bonus than spending another point. And if you look plus 17 to plus 20. Okay. By choosing it down here, I had it an extra five. So instead of having plus 20, I now have plus 22 crit severity. Okay, because I chose it there. All right, so that is the new triple skill tree. I hope this kind of demystified this a bit for you. Uh, kind of explained what it is each thing does. Gives you the uh, <laughs> gives you the courage to experiment a bit, or at least take a look at it a bit. I do recommend you get on Tribble, play with it before you go and do it in Holodeck. STO Academy will be coming out with a new skill tree that does have this new skill tree on it very soon. I don't know the exact date. You'd have to check with them. They do have a YouTube channel. Uh, but check back on their site frequently. And uh, like I said, I hope this demystifies for you. I hope you learned something here. And you can hear the discussion of Teacher's Corner live every Wednesday night on the show at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.